Hi, I'm Liz. And I'm Leah. I'm from The Art of Frosting on YouTube, and you may know Leah from... Leah's Crazy Cake Lab. But you also know us now from thecakedecoratinginstructor.com and The Cake Academy. So I want to say thanks to everyone out there who answered our questionnaire about what you really need in a comprehensive cake decorating course. So thanks, you guys are awesome, and you are really asking the right questions. I was so impressed with that. You really do know just what you're needing in a comprehensive course, so thanks for that. Yeah, and we're really, really excited to finally be able to give you the intro to our cake method. And we're really excited to show you what our design process is. And a lot of the videos that you've seen, we've actually designed on camera. It's true. And so we really want to show you how we do that. So that's where the method comes in. There is a method to our madness. It's the method. That's right. And there's a reason that we call it the method. When we were talking about what to call this course, it's really not an introductory course. It's not really a beginner's course, even though it's great for beginners. It's a whole method. So what we do in our method is we take basic skills, really basic piping skills. We teach you how to combine them to make an elaborate design. But the key to this is quickly. You can learn quickly and you can actually put your cake together quickly. So that's really why we're calling it a method, just to clear that up in case you were wondering. So learning a method doesn't really have to take a long time. We heard that from you guys. Nobody really wants to spend years learning, even though as cake decorators today, we're still learning. You really do still learn. But you want to get up and running quickly. And really that's what we found over the years with hundreds of apprentices in the shops. We needed to get them in and get them productive quickly. So the way that we did that is we taught them how to combine the most basic skills to create something really beautiful. And it works time and time and time again. So we wanted to make something that you can learn quickly in short periods of time and repeat those results in your own house. But there really is kind of a reasoning that really pushed us to create this course. And it's not a good one. Well, the truth is that when we go around the country, we look in bakeries, especially grocery store bakeries, because that's where we both started out. So tell them some of the things that you've seen. Well, I've seen a lot. <laughs> um, we've, we've seen a lot of cakes that are especially like um, big flowers that are brown, and they don't necessarily look like brown flowers. They look like piles of something else that are brown. Yeah, really bad. You never want to see that on the top of a cake. Yeah, and we've also seen super unlevel cakes where one side of the cake is right here and the other's this way. Um, we've seen borders that just look terrible. <laughs> and um, I don't know, we've, we, I mean, we've kind of seen it all when it comes to cake wreckage. It's true. So we want to make it clear that whenever we're looking, we're always looking for inspiration. It's so exciting to see what other people do. And every time we teach an apprentice, we learn something. That is my most exciting part about teaching an apprentice is they come up with something I never thought of, which is great. So when we go out around and lo are looking, we're really looking for inspiration. What's happening out there? What's new? But a lot of times what we're seeing is decorators who really are poorly trained. And it doesn't have to be that way. It's so simple to learn how to decorate in a way that's quick. Now see, that's the problem. When you're in a store, and I know a lot of you are home decorators that we're talking to, but it really is the same thing. When you're in a store, you have to work quickly. When you're at home, you don't wanna take three days for a cake. You wanna work quickly. So we know that that's the problem, that they're trying to work quickly and putting out product that really is substandard and it just does not have to be that way. So in our search for looking for inspiration, we found a lot of that too. There are some amazing decorators out there, but there are many who you can tell just don't have the real foundations that they need 
to create quickly and to create beautifully. And that's really what we want for you. Even if you're a decorator who's been around in the business a long time, there may be pieces that you missed in your training that are preventing you from decorating quickly and beautifully all the time. And that's really the aim, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. And also, I'd just like to add that even though we're teaching the basic skills to combine for elaborate decorations, these basic skills you need, every other advanced technique is going to come from knowing these basic skills. So That's true. all of the sculpting, all of that stuff, I know because of these basic skills from this method that we that we know and are tra are training other people to do. Yeah, it's true. So it would be fun to tell you our story, how it happened. My mom was a home decorator. She kind of learned to decorate out of spite. She decorated a four-tier fudge cake for my great-grandmother's birthday and brought it to new in-laws. Well, it didn't go that well. One of my cousins started picking at the cake. My mom said, why don't you just cut the cake? Well, they didn't like that so much. They lopped off the top tier and said, oh, I think it'll be easier to serve this way. And so the next year, she was asked to decorate a cake with some Snickers in the background. She decided that she would show them a cake. What she created was a masterpiece. She, it was a three or four tiers with a crown on top and roses and garlands and string work. It, it was gorgeous. And that was the birth of the cake decorator in our family. So she went on to learn. She was a really good student. And she learned a lot of amazing techniques on her own out of books. And eventually, she went on to get a job in a store. But what she found is that the skills that she had translated only so far because they were slow. Hard drying flowers, you know, her skills even in piping borders were very, very slow. So she had to relearn. And that's really where this method came to be. She learned to put together, layer things quickly that weren't necessarily elaborate on their own, but together looked amazing. So that's really where this core method came from and so why we're so excited to share it with all of you because we know how much it's going to help everyone in their foundational skills to be able to move forward and create the most elaborate things. So like Leah said, every flower, every border, every advanced technique that you've seen us do really comes from knowing these core methods and having these skills uh, in place and at the basis of, of what you do. So like I said, it's great for a real beginner because you start from scratch and have the great um, foundations that you need. But for even a pro, if there's things that you missed, if you're finding you can't decorate quickly enough, you know, you may be missing some foundational skills that you can pick up that will launch you into full speed, you know, decorating like you've never decorated before. So that's really the cool thing. So enough talking for right now. We really want to show you what we're talking about. And we want to show you some tools and some skills. Yeah, let's get started. So we are in full on training mode now. And this is what training looks like. It's a board on your turntable and a bag of white icing. So this is the way that a person can train without using up a lot of materials, really, or even a lot of icing. Your icing can be reused over and over again. So this is the way we train on the backs of boards and on the backs of pans. So one of the things that is the most important is the way that you hold your bag. This is something that I have seen a lot of experienced decorators do incorrectly. And there's a lot of reasons for that that we do explain in the method. But holding your bag like this in your palm, twisted, helps you have pressure here, takes the pressure off your hand, and then you just can use that squeezing motion with your palm for the perfect pressure control. Pressure control is a thing that gives you beautiful borders and flowers, it's knowing. But if you're not holding your bag right, if you're holding your bag like this, you have very little ability to have pressure control. It's all one, it's just one squeeze. With this, 
you have this beautiful ability to squeeze and release, squeeze and release, allowing you to have tiny borders with the same tip or giant borders with the same tip, all about pressure. So this is one I've seen. If you're doing this, you know that's something that needs to be corrected. Another thing is if you're holding your bag at both ends like this, one, you're adding extra heat. So we got a lot of questions about icing and heat. If you have hot hands doing this, can create water in your bag. So a lot of those little tiny things, those are things that when you learn from a pro, you um, gain that information that you may have not had before. And it could be the one thing that makes all the difference in your decorating. So I wanna give an example here. Here's two things that we teach. So I'm guiding, I've got my pressure control here, and we teach a zigzag, a basic zigzag. Now, almost anybody can do a zigzag because it's just squeezing and moving the bag back and forth. In fact, I've seen decorators even do it without guidance. It's a little messier, but yeah, it can be done. So the other is just a simple swirl and another swirl. So hold your bag straight up and down, rotate of the wrist, around, and rotate of the wrist. So these are some of the practice patterns that we have our decorators learn quickly. Now, I wanna show you what can be done with that. So these are some of the things we've seen when we're out and about. So I'm gonna pretend that I'm the decorator who just doesn't know how to combine skills. I'm gonna use one hand and I'm gonna create a zigzag. I can't tell you how many times we've seen this and sometimes it looks like this. <laughs> but this is a basic skill a beginning decorator will learn and a person might use this for a border. Okay, so one-handed without guidance and no pressure control and you've seen this out and around, right? It's okay, not the best. I'm gonna trade out and put my pan on here and show you what it could look like with your basic zigzag and your basic garland. So if you know how to do this, use guidance and come around. So you're just using your little rotation of the wrist, a little pressure control to come around and a rotation. Okay, so now I've established corners. I'm gonna use my bag and my guidance here, and I'm gonna create a really nice, even, full zigzag in between. So, there's a difference between that and that. Now this took the same amount of time as this did. And so my question is, which do you prefer and which would you rather be putting on your cakes? So in lesson one, you really, with a little bit of practice, would be able to do this border combination. I'm really just expanding on what you've just learned with a different tip. So I'm using a rose tip. This is a 124 rose tip. And I'm going to show you how to do this in a different way. So I'm going to create a straight line. And then I'm going to use the same zigzag technique with my rose tip. Okay, and now I'm coming back in. And with my pressure control, I'm doing a smaller zigzag. So now let me show you how we can use this on the top of the cake. So I'm just going to shift my tip up slightly. And I'm doing the zigzag here. And I'm just rotating my wrist. I'm not moving my elbow at all.
Now I'm coming back in with my star tip and I'm going to do an even smaller zigzag. See, you've only had one lesson and you're already combining borders. Okay, so now I'm going to add the other border that you learned in a different way. So I'm going to, I'm going to start right here. I'm going to go around and rotating my wrist. You really want to try to make them as even as possible. And now you've got a beautiful top of your cake with no flowers. So being able to decorate the top of the cake and fill up the top of the cake is important, especially if you don't know how to do flowers yet. But you still want to make something pretty on top. So what Leah showed is a way to actually create the top of your cake, make a smaller surface for you to have to decorate or put some design on. So borders can really help you in that way. So I want to show you one more thing that we can do with just the techniques we've learned so far. And I've got my pressure control here in my hand. I'm guiding. And we're just going to create an S shape. Now I'm using a little more of a drop line technique, which you'll learn, but I'm just using that little rosette there. And also rotating my tip one more time with even pressure control, a dollop in the center. So now I've got a place that I can write on my cake. I've got a little bit of a design here. I can add a cherry or a candy or some sprinkles in the middle, but I've got a fully decorated top of the cake. So we hope we made good on our promise to show you that even with the most basic skills, so two of the most beginning basic piping skills that you can begin to create beautiful borders. Really, within your first cake decorating lesson, you could be able to do this. It's kind of amazing, isn't it? I think it's awesome. Yeah, I, it's, I'm always thrilled every time I see a new apprentice create the first top of a cake that's really beautiful and they're always so thrilled with themselves. So I can't wait for you guys to have that same experience. And if you're already a decorator, I hope you might be noticing some ways that you can use your skills that you already have or ways that you can hone them a little bit. But this is the way that our more than 60 million viewers have begun to learn to decorate. We've been so excited to hear from so many people around the world that started businesses using these techniques. So that was one of the questions that we got was, can a home decorator really make any money decorating from home? Well, you can if you know how to do it quickly, right? Exactly. And so some of the objections that we saw on, on our questionnaire was, one, that you have to be super talented to decorate. Two, it's too expensive to decorate. And three, you don't have any time to learn these skills. So those are things that we're going to address in our next video. Yeah, you guys will be surprised to find out what it really takes to become a great decorator home or for business. So we want to thank you for your time, for joining us. We hope you learned a little bit today. If you did, get out there and get into some training. Start to practice on the backs of your pans and on your boards or on anything you can find. Maybe not your kids or the dog. That's probably not a good idea. I don't think so. Anyway, we really want you to be a part of the conversation. So we want to know specifically, what were you surprised about the most about combining just these two simple techniques? We want to hear your thoughts on it. It's always exciting to us. So let's get the conversation started and we will see you again very soon. Bye. Bye.